How you doing? I'm Callan and this is Slapped Ham. Today we're looking at the eerie history of ghost photography. But as always, before we get into it, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for more creepy content just like this. The history of ghost photography actually begins one year earlier than many people believe. In 1860, a Jersey City photographer named W. Campbell accidentally became the world's first spirit photographer. Campbell was shooting in his studio just as he would any other day, however when he developed the plate he was working on he noticed an image of a small boy. Campbell was astonished as he had been completely alone in his studio. He tried to repeatedly replicate the photo but was never able to do so. Because of the accidental nature of Campbell's photo, many believers point to it as irrefutable evidence that spirit photography is genuine. Despite numerous accounts of this photo, however, there seems to be no copies of it on the internet. Shortly after Campbell's discovery, another photographer became one of the most well-known names in the world of ghost photography. In 1861, William H. Mumler, a photographer who worked in New York and Boston, inadvertently created a double exposure showing what appeared to be a mysterious figure in a self-portrait he had shot. Mumler soon realised that there was profit to be made by telling grieving people that he could provide them with photographic evidence that their loved ones are still with them. People flocked to the studio eager to get a piece of the supernatural for themselves. Mumler's most famous client was Mary Todd Lincoln. His photo showing her posing with the ghostly figure of a deceased Abraham Lincoln is one of the most famous spirit photos in history. Mumler's rise to fame was not without controversy. Many people insisted that his works were forgeries, some even accusing him of breaking into people's homes to steal photos of deceased relatives in order to produce his photographs. To combat this criticism, Mumler invited Philadelphia physician Dr. Child to observe and study his methods. Dr. Child asserted that he found no evidence of tampering after watching the entire process from start to finish. Many of Mumler's supporters claim that while he did produce some fraudulent works, a number of his mysterious photographs are indeed genuine. They assert that when he discovered that he had the ability to photograph spirits, greed motivated him to resort to fraudulent methods to reproduce the results for profit. Around the same time that Mumler was beginning his lucrative spirit photography business, another famous ghostly photo came to the public attention. In December 1861, Lord Cumbermere, owner of Cumbermere Abbey in Cheshire, England, passed away. While his friends and family attended his funeral, Sybil Corbett took advantage of the empty house to take a long exposure photograph of the library. The exposure took a full hour to complete, so she needed an empty house to ensure that no one would walk into the frame. When Corbett developed the photo, she was shocked to discover the ghostly image of Lord Cumbermere himself, sitting in one of the library's chairs when he should have been at his own funeral. Many skeptics allege that a member of the household staff must have entered the library at some point during the exposure and sat in the chair but every staff member insisted that they had been in attendance at the funeral. Not to mention this explanation could hardly account for the figure's distinct resemblance of the Lord of the Abbey. In the 1870s, Britain's first official ghost photographer came onto the scene. Hoping to gain some of the same wealth and notoriety that Mumler claimed, Hudson began working with medium Georgiata Horton to photograph clients' deceased loved ones. In 1872, a fellow spiritualist by the name of William Henry Harrison proved that Hudson's works were forgeries. Hudson would pre-make plates in which he dressed up in ghostly attire and used the plates to create a simple double exposure. Hudson's forgeries were one of the early setbacks to the legitimacy of this type of spiritualist work. The scandals of the 1870s continued with French photographer E. Baguette. Baguette was a spirit photographer who came into the spotlight by taking photos of famous people in which ghosts seemed to appear. He was accused of forgery and confessed to using double exposure to create his images. However, Baguette still had many supporters. His proponents argued that he had been pressured or perhaps even paid by church officials to falsely confess. 
The truth of these claims is still unknown, and a lot of e-baguette's work has been lost in history. In the 1870s, spiritualists had what could be considered a major victory in the research of Willem Staten Moses. Moses was the first to make any sort of claim about how ghost photography actually worked. He claimed that spirits were composed at least partially of a substance called ectoplasm that was largely invisible to the naked eye but could be seen on film. This assertion was one of the earliest instances of supernatural photography stepping into the mainstream scientific world. In the 1890s, spirit photography took another big step into the mainstream world with the research of J. Trail Taylor. Taylor was the editor of the well-established British Journal of Photography. He set out to disprove claims that actual ghosts could be captured on film by replicating the results using techniques such as long exposures and double exposures. However, Taylor was surprised to discover that he was unable to satisfactorily produce ghost photographs. In his attempts, the figures lacked the distinct three-dimensional quality of the famous spirit photos at the time. As a result of his research, Taylor was forced to admit that there could be some validity to popular ghost photos. Despite gaining ground in the late 19th century, ghost photography had a setback in 1906 with the work of William Hope. Hope was a popular spirit photographer who produced over 2,500 such photos during his career, purportedly using the techniques of slow shutter speed and double exposure. Psychic researcher Harry Price set out to expose Hope as a fraud. He provided Hope with plates to use while shooting. What Hope didn't realise is that the plates had been etched with markings that should have shown up on the prints. When the markings were absent, Price knew that Hope had switched the plates with his own pre-prepared ghostly images. In spite of his public exposure as a fraud, Hope was not without his supporters. In fact, Arthur Conan Doyle staunchly defended Hope throughout his lifetime. Just five years after Hope's disgrace, spirit photography was vindicated with another mainstream success. In 1911, James Coates published a well-received book titled Photographing the Invisible. The book was a practical guide to photographing ghosts without fraudulent intervention. In 1936, Harry Price returned to the spotlight. A photo was published in Country Life magazine. It would become one of the most famous spirit photos of all time, known as the Brown Lady of Raynham Hall. Two photographers set up a camera to photograph a staircase in Raynham Hall in Norfolk, England. As one photographer ducked beneath the curtain to take the photo, the other photographer gasped in shock as he saw a shrouded figure on the stairs. The figure later appeared in the developed photo. The figure was believed to be the ghost of Lady Dorothy Townsend. Price set out to repeat his earlier success of debunking spiritualist claims by investigating the photo. However, his investigation revealed no evidence of tampering. Detractors asserted that the camera could have been bumped when the photographer was surprised by his colleague's gasp, but there's never been any evidence of this claim. In 1966, another of history's most famous ghost photos appeared. It was taken in England at the Queen's House in Greenwich. Photographers sought to photograph a staircase there, they insist that the staircase was clear when they took the photo, but a ghostly figure appeared on the film. Experts from film company Kodak inspected the negatives and discovered no evidence of tampering. In the late 20th century, digital photography changed the photography world substantially. Photography became quicker and easier. It also made it more difficult to create ghostly photos artificially by tampering with the film. However, digital photography also became a boon to ghost photography. Many people using digital cameras noted mysterious orbs appearing in the photos. Some claim that the orbs can be explained by the camera's flashes reflecting off dust or pollen, but others insist that the orbs are ghostly figures. Before we continue, if you're enjoying this video, remember to hit that subscribe button and turn on channel notifications. That way you'll get updates on all our latest videos.
In the modern day, ghost photos are easy to dismiss. People can easily manipulate photos digitally, making many people skeptical of what may be legitimate images of ghosts. However, there is one ghostly figure appearing in photos today that has become a dangerous legend. He's known as Slenderman. He appears as a tall, thin figure with a featureless face who stalks the backgrounds of photos. His legends often revolve around abducting children, and some young people have even harmed others under his influence. The popularity of Slenderman photographs is evidence that even in the age of Photoshop, the power of ghost photos hasn't diminished. From W. Campbell's accidental discovery to the eerie photos that circulate the internet today, photos of spirits have been frightening the world for centuries. Instead of making us more skeptical, technology has only served to bring the supernatural into the mainstream. As technology continues to improve, who knows what the future will bring. If you want more creepy ghost photos, then check out this embedded playlist right there. Leave us a comment down below as well with your opinion on what you thought of this video. And that's it for me, I'll see you all next time.